victory in Jesus. <clears throat>
Yes, sir. Ken and Judy. Okay. Oh, it's good to be here and see all your beautiful faces. And I'm going to do what we always do. I'm going to read to you some of our emails that we get from around the country and around the world. Uh, since we are on the Internet 24 hours a day, you can watch any number of messages and we're teaching around the clock and uh, we get letters from overseas and Netherlands and from Europe and Germany and and over in Malaysia down in the South Sea Islands and India and around the world these are people who write as well as we're on TV in about 200 different towns and cities across America from the East Coast to the West Coast Eddie Oxidine writes about, uh, he comments on the charismatic twisting, binding and loosing, two witnesses, keys to the kingdom. Then I will judge you. You are false in your teaching. Okay, thank you, Eddie. Appreciate your, would you like some DVDs? Just let us know. All right. He doesn't like it because I preached against what they call binding and loosing. Bind means to forbid. And uh, that was a legal term. Uh, David Egbaha, Egbaha uh, comments on Christmas, Israel, and history. Constantine's ex mass edict or toleration. David Egbaha writes, Thank you, Pastor Jim, for opening my eyes to the truth. David in Sierra Leone uh, and uh, we appreciate you writing. Uh, Gordon Smith commented on the video, Binding Satan is God's Work During the two, Last 2,000 Years of Time. Uh, Gordon Smith writes, Hello, Pastor Jim. God continue to bless you and Mary and brethren who are with you and listening this time. This thing called Ammonion, you are so right about it all bad habits okay thank you and then craig tarot writes on a dvd i did i hate pentecostalism and the charismatic doctrine it is a worldwide lie and it is i was just reading some comments here the holy spirit testifies jesus christ to us within our spirit that is the living word within is that brings us to life alive in christ god's spirit communicates with our spirit through revealing of the truth notice there is no audible words but it is his spirit but the holy spirit's truth that's after you study and read the word of god that reveals all truth to our spirit we speak the english language that god by his choice is what we will use. He created all languages, and the Spirit of God will seek men in their languages that he gave them to speak. That is after they read the Bible in their language. I pray that God and Jesus will reveal this truth to those that truly desire God. Amen. No next for Pentecostal jibber-jabber. God will... Reveal to us all truth with clear, simple understanding. Understand this simplicity. Jesus said, do not forbid little ones to come to me. Then he gave a warning. So easy a child can be taught and led by the Holy Spirit. And Jesus, as a child, taught the elders as they were astonished at their own language. And he is the amen. Now I will... Watch this video. Okay, thank you. I didn't understand all that. And then got a, a email from a regular listener in Oklahoma City. 
Ricky Jenkins, he's been with us a long time. Greetings to the Israel of the Most High God, the wild olive branch grafted in by the precious blood of the Lamb, to my agapatos, that's the word beloved, under shepherd shalom, have made many arrangements with my ex-wife to acquire a desktop computer with DVD burner, so we'll be able, <coughs> Lord willing, to make our own copies for distribution as I witness for our master. Hopefully this will relieve my many requests for DVDs. May I please trouble you with what I hope is my burdensome request. I believe, Mr. Brown, you said 3019 was one of the best messages on predestination. I don't remember which one that was. Might I bother you for a copy of this message and any other messages you might recommend for witnessing? Have taken a year to compile a proper library tools with which to learn New Testament Greek. Hopefully, by God's undeserved caris, grace, I will immerse myself in everything Greek. Have Mounts' lectures, Greek for the rest of us, vocabulary, flashcards, Machen's beginner's Greek, and you, my dear under-shepherd. Lord willing, I shall be interpreting Greek by this time next year. I can thank you enough for the inspiration you have given me these 14 years. Been with us 14 years. My heart is full of agape O oh, for you, Mr. Brown, and staff at Grace and Truth. Thank you, everyone, for putting up with me and overlooking my immaturities for the last 13 years. Words cannot express my deep agape for all of you. Shalom, Shabbat, agape O. Sincerely, Ricky Jenkins in Oklahoma City. Thank you, Rick. We love you, brother. And then Esley Johns commented on Revelation, how to study throughout the Bible, the beast rises out of the sea. Thank God for you sending, thank God for sending you my way. Uh, I can't get enough of your teachings. I wish I was around you, but God got me in the fire right now. I'm hard-headed. You are a true mentor. Thank you. Uh, thank you, es Esley. Thank you very much. I need to hear those things. I uh, got a, a letter from a fellow here. I'm going to answer a little bit of this. Uh, no, this is not the one. Doug 1000 replied to Doug 1000's comment. I think it is you who doesn't know what he is talking about. Well, gosh, we need to dismiss and quit right now then, okay? Is that all right? No. We're not going to pay attention to him. Oh, we're not going to pay attention to you, okay? Uh, the message is to the seven churches is to tell all Christians represented by the seven churches, not just pastors, on how to behave until he, Jesus, returns. Separately, let me ask you this. What do you think in, is the confirmation of the covenant for seven years? Well, the Bible says in the original text, the week will confirm the covenant of God with his people. It'll take that full week, God using evil men to cut his people down. Uh, then a comment on Christmas, eat flesh and drink blood is not the Roman Catholic Mass. Uh, this is from the nose behind the curtain commented, many of our Christmas carols were written by Synagogue of Satan. Well, they're actually written by Roman Catholic priests. Silent Night was written by Roman Catholic priests, in case you didn't know. Stephen Corbett writes, You're just going to, this is just a confusing thing. I'll read that later. I can give you an answer on it, but you're not going to understand it without a bunch of teaching on it. Uh, 
Then this fellow says, the nose from behind the curtain commented on eat flesh and drink blood is not the Roman Catholic mass. Thanks, should I take it that you observe a Saturday Sabbath? Absolutely not. Saturday is not. Saturday was the Sabbath in the Old Testament. But the point is, not even you keep the Saturday Sabbath. No one I know keeps the Saturday Sabbath. You actually can't keep it and live in America because in Exodus 16 and 29, here's what you're supposed to do on the Sabbath. See, for that the Lord hath given you the Sabbath, therefore he hath given you on the sixth day the bread of two days. Abide ye every man in his place. Let no man go out of his place on the seventh day. You're supposed to stay at home on the Sabbath and do nothing. It's not a day to go to church. Sunday did not take the place of the Sabbath. That's something that Ellen White of the Seventh-day Adventist made up herself. It's not true. How can the Sabbath and Sunday be the same thing? Here's some things you can't do on the Sabbath. You can kindle no fire in Exodus 35, 2 and 3. You cannot get in a car, start it up, and have those pistons firing. You can't do it. Uh, gosh, and there's so much more on this. Uh, you have to offer a meat offering, a burnt offering every Sabbath. You have to offer all the offerings on the Sabbath that are supposed to be offered. There is Isaiah 58, 13, no pleasure on the Sabbath. You can't watch any basketball games on Saturday afternoon. I'm sorry, but you can't. How's that? No entertainment whatsoever. Lay down, eat your food that you prepared on Friday. You cannot prepare any food on the Sabbath. Now, and you can't go to a restaurant and say, well, I won't prepare any food. I'll have this guy prepare my food for me. And I drove my car, and it's a six-cylinder, and I drove it up here, and all those, all those cylinders were firing every time revolution came around. You can't keep the Sabbath like that, can you? No. Carry no burdens on the Sabbath. If you're wanting to move your, your, uh, one of your front pieces of furniture across the room, you can't do that. You can't take any burden on the Sabbath. Uh, and uh, God caused the new moons in the, new, in the feast on the Sabbath to stop. You have to prepare the showbread every Sabbath. Now, you, does anybody know what the showbread is? You have the recipe for it. It's ridiculous the reason we worship on the first day of the week, that's the day that Jesus wrote, rose from the dead, and he got together with his apostles on the first day of the week. And then over in 1 Corinthians 16, 1 and 2, let every man lay aside upon the first day of the week, which is Sunday, as God has prospered him. And then over there in Acts uh, 20 and 7, Paul, on the first day of the week, Paul preached. Now, that's the day they met. But nobody gathered together with a bunch of priests on the first day of the week. Everybody stayed at home in their house. So if you're going to do a seven-day Sabbath, you need to fix all of those, all of those uh, uh, days that you, you're going to have to keep every one of the Sabbaths there were many Sabbaths. You had the, you had the uh, Day of Atonement. You had the Passover. You had Pentecost. You can't just come up and say one day. Is it. We, I taught a Sabbath series. Every day is the Sabbath. Now, the Bible tells us in Hebrews 3 and 4 that Israel could not enter, enter into God's rest because of unbelief in the wilderness. And he, and he calls that rest 
the rest of the Sabbath throughout the third and the fourth chapter. The true Sabbath is every day when we believe that God has ordained everything to be that's going on. That makes you rest, and the word Sabbath means rest. The older you get, the longer you live, then you enter into the Sabbath. I don't know why nobody's ever discovered that but me. I don't know. If you're going to keep the Sabbath, you can't start no fires or drive your car or ride an ox. Or You probably won't be riding an ox, but you can't be riding your motorcycle or, or whatever. You can't. You can't do nothing on the Sabbath. You go home and go to bed and rest. Uh, no, I don't celebrate a Saturday Sabbath. Every day is the Sabbath. The reason we meet on Sunday is because that's the day everybody takes off. If everybody starts taking off on Monday, we're going to start meeting on Monday, okay? Or does it matter? And besides that, the Sabbath here would be different than the Sabbath uh, on the other side of the world. You're off a day, aren't you? All right. And then... Uh, I got a letter from uh, from Teddy on Revelation, the wind of the holiest, the house of God, keeping the temple clean. Great teaching. I am so ashamed of how I have lived and the temptations I still struggle with every day. Lord, help me and give me strength to overcome. I cannot do it myself. Agape to the church. Thanks again, Jim, for all you do for God's elect. Agape. All right. Now, some of you don't want to take my advice. Don't ask for it, okay? I don't cut slack for nobody. I didn't cut it from my mother when she was alive. Uh, let me see here. I'll read this one, then I'll stop. And I'll read the rest of these tonight. Singing Cowboy 674. This is from him. A comment on doctrine of the devil, accept Christ and sinner's prayer, is the most corrupt doctrine. I listened to the entire teaching, and I can't tell you how much I agree with you in several areas and how much I couldn't disagree more with you in a few areas. I came out of a Baptist church, and I've heard some of these same things but it's a rarity to hear that term accept Jesus Christ come out of any of the preachers that I cut my teeth hearing I was I was come and repent and be born again be saved I do believe in baptism as an outward showing of the inward regeneration it's not true baptize comes from two words baptizo and babto Baptizo means to cover. Baptizo means to stain with a dye. You can't stain with H2O. All the rituals are blotted out. You haven't heard all that yet. I'm not going to read this. You said the blood was washed over me in a spiritual sense when I repented or cried out to Jesus. That's right. There's one baptism, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. I'm not going to read this because you're very confusing on your doctrines. Hate the sinner's prayer. It seems you have you have an anger at the bringers as much as you do the false doctrine. Your dad didn't lie to you. My dad lied through his teeth. How do you know what my dad did and didn't do? He was deceived. Well, anybody that's deceived and preaches lies. It's a big difference. No, it's no difference. I hope you didn't let him take your hostility or anger at the wrong to the grave. My father was mean as a snake. You didn't want to cross him even as a preacher. He would cuss you and get a ball bat after you. Now, tell me about my father. He was ornery. I'm not mad at him. He just said things he didn't know nothing about. All right. That'll be enough reading. I'll come back and read some more tonight. All right. 
Let me give you our announcements. People think I was just bitter. Anybody that knew my father knew whew, he was the most rebellious man I was ever around. I was around a lot of people in my life, a lot of music people. J.D. Sumner, who sang bass for Elvis in Vegas with the Stamps Quartet, six foot six, told me one time, I ain't never met a man like your father. <laughs> That's saying a lot because J.D.'s met a lot of mob people, mafia people. He wasn't afraid of the devil himself. And he'd threaten anybody. Boy, I've got some stories on that. Every day was... When he'd drive up in the driveway, us kids, we'd be eight, nine, ten years old, and we'd go, oh, God, he's here. Oh, God, he's here. Oh, 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 God, what do we do? What do we do? It's like we were terrified of him. He came in screaming and yelling. And I'm not mad at him. I would set him down and make him behave. He'd be cussing somebody in my house. I'd go over and stand over and say, you won't talk like that in this house. Do you understand me? like he was eight years old or something. One time he stomped out, I'm just leaving here. And he was stomping out, I'm never coming back. I said, now you promise me. <laughs> and he'd come driving up my driveway a month later, screaming and yelling. Some people, and you know who the most miserable person is in a situation like this? That is them. I just make him behave, and and he would. Everybody else was afraid of him, but I wasn't. All right, let me give you the announcements. We are on TV every night at eight thirty in Nashville on Comcast channel forty nine, eight thirty every night. Uh, we're also on Sunday morning at 8.30. And uh, we, uh, and you can tune in and watch us. We, uh, we are going to have our, we support our, our needy people. We've got a lot of needy people. We've got people that are just, I mean, paddling as hard as they can to keep their head above water. And they're having a hard time doing it. And uh, if I could just take them all and put them in a house and take care of them and pay their bills, I would. Some of them are older, they're uh, disabled, and they need our help. You want to help these needy believers, they're believers. Uh, send your check to make it out to grace and truth and put needy on the bottom of it. And uh, or you can send a gift card, whatever you want to do. And uh, we also support our missionaries. They're out of town right now. And uh, but that is Scott and Delilah Warry. We support them. They have a mission work here, and we're trying to reach out to the Spanish-speaking people. And uh, Scott and D and their kids came back from Ecuador and they, of course, they all speak fluent Spanish and uh, they need our support. Please keep supporting them. They are, uh, they were down there in Ecuador for eight years contending with everything from headhunters to boa constrictors. Uh, to spiders and poison snakes and they wasn't far enough in the jungle to uh, uh, be where the jaguars were, the big cats, but he said you could go a little way in the jungle and run into them and uh, they need our support. Just make your check to Grace and Truth Ministries and put mission on the bottom of it. We, uh, we have uh, have our chili cookout coming up October the 14th. So everybody come and join us. It'll be right down here at Rockland Recreation Center on Rockland Road, just around the corner from the church. 
All right. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. And Vincent, you want to pray for us? Father, we just give you thanks again for allowing us to come to a place that we can sit out and hear the truth. So, living in a very dark world. Thank you for Jim and Mary and all that come out in the ministry. Lord, we pray that you'd help us to reach out more and more and seek more people out with the truth and get all the sheep that's out there, Lord. And that we can. Bless Jim this morning as he brings the word to us. Bless our open up our ears and our hearts to receive it. Lord, we ask that you bless the needy, Lord, that uh, we open up our hearts to them also. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Am